Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and this is Cindy Oliver and she's a dog. So recently a number of anti-vaxxers have revived an old anti-vax talking point about the fact that a lot of vaccines on the childhood schedule never underwent saline placebo controlled trials. Here's the thing, this is true. But it's a very good thing that it is true, because if it wasn't true, it would mean that a large number of children had been deliberately put at risk of unnecessary suffering, permanent disability, and death. In this video, Cindy and I will be going back to the science and explaining why. As most of you would know, before any new medication or vaccine is approved for human use, it has to be tested both in preclinical and clinical trials. And typically there are four phases of clinical trials, which I will just go through. And they use the term biomedical intervention as an encompassing term in the description of the phases. Phase one clinical trials are done to test a new biomedical intervention for the first time in a small group of people. For example, 20 to 80, to evaluate safety. For example, to determine a safe dosage range and identify side effects. Phase two clinical trials are done to study an intervention in a larger group of people, several hundred, to determine efficacy, that is whether it works as intended, and to further evaluate its safety. Phase three studies are done to study the efficacy of an intervention in large groups of trial participants from several hundred to several thousand by comparing the intervention to other standard or experimental interventions or to non-interventional standard care. Phase three studies are also used to monitor adverse events and to collect information that will allow the intervention to be used safely. Phase, hang on, four studies are done after an intervention has been marketed. These studies are designed to monitor the effectiveness of the approved intervention in the general population and to collect information about any adverse effects associated with widespread use over longer periods of time. They may also be used to investigate the potential use of the intervention in a different condition or in combination with other therapies. And I will talk more about phase four studies later in the video. But first, I would like to point out that none of the phases mention the word placebo. And there is a very good reason for this. And that reason goes back to the World Medical Association Declaration of Helsinki, which was first adopted in 1968 and covers ethical principles for medical research involving human subjects. One of the principles covered relates to the use of placebos, and I'll just read it out to you. The benefits, risks, burdens and effectiveness of a new intervention must be tested against those of the best proven interventions, except in the following circumstances. Where no proven intervention exists, the use of placebo or no intervention is acceptable, or where for compelling and scientifically sound methodological reasons, the use of any intervention less effective than the best proven one, the use of placebo or no intervention is necessary to determine the efficacy or safety of an intervention. And the patient's who receive any intervention less effective than the best proven one, placebo or no intervention, will not be subject to additional risks of serious or irreversible harm as a result of not receiving the best proven intervention. Extreme care must be taken to avoid abuse of this option. So what this means is if a new childhood vaccine is developed for a disease where there is already an existing vaccine, it is unethical to test a new vaccine against placebo because you would be deliberately exposing the children in the placebo group to disease, permanent disability and death. And unless you're an asshole, you don't want to do this. So what you do instead is test the new vaccine against the old vaccine. And of course, this 
doesn't just happen with vaccines. It also happens with medication. For example, if you develop a new cancer medication, you don't give the control group nothing. You give them the currently approved best treatment. And just to give you an example of why we don't do placebo-controlled trials of new vaccines when there is already an older vaccine, the original polio vaccine was initially trialled against placebo. In 1954, 420,000 first and second graders in the United States were inoculated with Jonas Salk's inactivated polio vaccine, while 200,000 were inoculated with saline. In the study, 16 children died from polio, all in the placebo group. 36 children were paralyzed by polio in the study, and 34 of them were in the placebo group. Only an absolute asshole would want to repeat this for a new polio vaccine. Likewise, we know that measles can be deadly for some children and in others it can lead to complications such as ear infections, diarrhea, pneumonia and swelling of the brain. Therefore, the combined measles, mumps and rubella vaccine was not tested against placebo prior to approval. It was tested against the single measles vaccine. And the single measles vaccine had been previously tested against placebo, as have a large number of other vaccines that are used as comparators when approved versions of vaccines are developed. Interestingly, though, although the MMR vaccine wasn't initially tested in a placebo-controlled trial, it has since been tested against a placebo. This could be done because it's normally given at 12 months, so they were able to test it against placebo by running a trial in infants at six months, as the placebo group would be no worse off than those receiving standard of care. The purpose of the trial was to see if the MMR vaccine given at six months would reduce the rate of hospitalizations for infections in general as like an off-target effect. And it didn't. And it also didn't increase them. There is also a double-blind placebo-controlled trial looking at adverse reactions following the MMR vaccine. It was done in 581 pairs of twins, and it was a crossover study, which means that those who initially got the vaccine later got the placebo and vice versa. So again, there are no ethical issues because everyone in the trial gets the vaccine eventually. The aim of the study was to determine what adverse events were caused by the vaccine and what were just temporally associated, meaning they occurred after the vaccine but were not caused by it. And what they found was that the true frequency of side effects was between 0.5 and 4%. And just to be clear, these are short-term side effects like fever and irritability, not serious side effects. Interestingly, they also found that respiratory symptoms, nausea and vomiting were observed more frequently in the placebo-injected group than in the MMR-vaccinated group. And they put this down to the vaccine providing short-term protection against other viral illnesses. But as we saw in the previous study, this protection isn't enough to make a difference in hospitalizations for infections over six months. But I digress. The other thing that anti-vaxxers don't seem to understand is that a vaccine placebo doesn't have to be saline. The whole point of a placebo is that the person receiving it, as well as the person administering it, shouldn't be able to distinguish it from the real thing. Therefore, it is not uncommon for a vaccine being tested for a new disease to be tested against a placebo that contains the same ingredients as the vaccine, except for the antigen. And one of the many examples of this was the quadrivalent vaccine against HPV, which is the virus that can cause cervical, penile, anal, vaginal, vulval, and oropharyngeal cancers. By using a placebo that also contained the aluminium adjuvant or aluminum, if you're in the US, it was harder for participants to distinguish between the vaccine and the placebo. And this is not an issue because the adjuvant has a long-established safety profile. 
The other thing that anti-vaxxers don't seem to get is that the clinical trials that are undertaken prior to vaccines being approved are not the end of vaccine safety monitoring. Safety is continually monitored as part of phase four studies. This includes both passive reporting systems like VAERS, where people can report adverse events, which are then investigated, as well as active reporting systems like VSAFE that specifically survey people following vaccination. These are the US systems, but similar systems are available in all countries. In Australia, where I live, it's done through the TGA, for instance. And then there are bespoke epidemiological studies. And these epidemiological studies are regularly reviewed. For instance, this is a systematic review of the safety of vaccines used for routine immunisation in the US. And this is pre-COVID vaccines, but they will be doing a review specifically looking at that too. Altogether, they found 338 studies reported in 518 publications, so quite a lot. For adults, they found no evidence of key adverse events other than anaphylaxis. For children and adolescents, they found no evidence of key adverse events other than rare adverse events such as anaphylaxis, idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, and febrile seizures with some childhood vaccines. And for pregnant women and their infants, they found no evidence of key adverse events following DTaP vaccination during pregnancy. So in summary, anti-vaxxers banging on that vaccines haven't been tested against saline placebos are just demonstrating their ignorance of the correct way to evaluate medical products and monitor safety. If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked, shared or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee or little Cindy here a treat. We really appreciate your support. Cindy and I actually got stuck in the rain today when we went to have our coffee and poor little Cindy for a while she was too scared to go in the rain so I had to I had to sort of carry her sort of halfway home but then she saw that all the other dogs in the pack were having fun in the rain so then she wanted to go down and have fun too. So little aside anyway if you we will be continuing to make videos about the science so if you'd like to join the cool kids and stay informed please hit the subscribe button thank you